for the following function, point and unit vector, compute the gradient of the function and evaluate at the point, find the unit vector in the direction of maximum increase of the function at the given point, find the rate of change of the function in the direction of a maximum increase at the point, and last but not least, find the directional derivative at the given point in the direction of the given vector. So, we got a lot to do, so here we go. Part A, we want to find the gradient. And of course, by now we know that the gradient of a function at an ordered triplet, A, B, C, is a vector whose components are defined by the partial derivative. So we have the partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the given point, the partial derivative with respect to y at the given point, and the partial derivative with respect to z at this given point. So here we go. First things first, using this beautiful function here, we want to find the partial derivatives. So we have the partial derivative of this function with respect to x. And as always, we'll keep in mind, we are differentiating with respect to x, so we're going to treat y and z like constants. So notice our whole denominator here is a constant. So all we need to do to differentiate is use the power rule. So all we're left with is that constant 1 over z or y minus z multiplied by the derivative of x, which is just 1. So we have a beautiful final answer of 1 by y minus z. Now, the partial derivative of this function with respect to y, since we're differentiating with respect to y here, we're going to treat x and z like constants. So again, looking back up at this function, notice that z, or excuse me, notice that y is in the denominator. So when we differentiate with respect to y, we'll need to rewrite this function. So we can say that f is equal to our constant x minus z multiplied by y minus z raised to the negative 1. So differentiating by the chain rule, we have minus 1 multiplied by x minus z multiplied by y minus z raised to the negative 2 multiplied by the derivative of y. So simplifying, we're left with minus x minus z, and that's all divided by y minus z squared. Beautiful! And last but not least, we want to find the partial derivative of this function with respect to z. So because we're differentiating with respect to z, we're going to treat both x and y like constants. So notice in this given function that we have a z both in the numerator and the denominator. So we could differentiate either using the quotient rule, or you could use the same format and use the product rule. So I'm going to go ahead and use our quotient rule here. So we have the derivative of the numerator, which is minus 1, multiplied by the original denominator, y minus z, minus the derivative of the denominator, which again is minus 1, multiplied by the original numerator, which is x minus z, and this is all divided by y minus z squared. So let's simplify. I'm going to distribute this negative through to both terms, and then lucky us, we have negative times a negative. So here we are left with minus y plus z plus x minus z, all divided by y minus z squared. And look at this, those y's, or excuse me, those z's cancel each other right out, leaving us with minus y plus x, all divided by y minus z squared. So, now that we have all three partial derivatives, we are ready to evaluate at this given point. So our given point here is 3, 2, negative 1. So, we have the partial derivative of the function at the point 3, 2, negative 1 is equal to 1 divided by 2 minus a minus 1, so it's going to be plus 1. So you're left with 1 third. Evaluating this partial derivative with respect to y at the point 3, 2, negative 1, we have minus 3 minus a minus 1, so 3 plus 1, all divided by 2 minus a minus 1, so 2 plus 1 squared, which leaves us with negative 4 over 
3 squared, which gives us 9. And the partial derivative with respect to z evaluated at the point 3, 2, negative 1. We have minus 2 plus 3 all divided by the same denominator as the partial derivative with respect to y, which is 9. So we have 1 ninth. So this provides us with the gradient. Putting this all together, we can see that the gradient of our function at the point 3, 2, negative 1 is the vector with components 1 third, negative 4 ninths, 1 ninth. And notice here we have a scalar multiple of 1 third, so I'm going to factor that out to make my computation later a little easier. So factoring this scalar multiple out, we're left with the vector 1 minus 4 thirds, 1 third. So again, remember, whichever form you use for the gradient here, the scalar multiple or the original vector, we'll get the same answer as long as our algebra is accurate and consistent. So that is the solution to part A, which we need for part B and part C. So part B is asking us to find a unit vector pointing in the direction of maximum increase. So we're looking for, actually we'll use a different vector here. We already have u. Let's say a vector v. So a vector v pointing in the direction of steepest ascent or maximum increase is the gradient at that given point by the rate of maximum increase or the magnitude of our gradient. So we already have the gradient, and all we need to do is find the magnitude, that rate of maximum increase, the solution to part C. Woohoo! So here we go. By the length of a scalar multiple property, I can keep that one third out in front, and then we are applying the distance formula. So we have one squared plus negative four ninths squared plus one third. Ooh, I did the math in my head, shame on me. That should be negative four thirds squared. And then we have one third squared. So this is one third multiplied by the square root of one plus 16 over nine plus one ninth. And getting a common denominator here for that one. Multiply the numerator and denominator of that by nine. We have one third multiplied by the big old square root of 9 plus 16 plus 1 over 9. So we have 1 third multiplied by the square root of 26 over 9. And by properties of radicals, we can simplify this further. We have 1 third, and I'm distributing that square root through to the numerator and denominator. Now, 26 does not have any perfect squares in its factors, but 9 sure does. So this leaves us with a beautiful final answer of the square root of 26 over 3 times 3, which is 9. So, therefore, a unit vector pointing in the direction of maximum increase is going to be the gradient that we found in part A. 1 third times that vector 1, negative 4 thirds, 1 third, all over the rate of maximum increase, which we found to be the square root of 26 over 9, and fractions in the denominator flip, where we multiply by their reciprocal. So that's 9 by the square root of 26, multiplied by 1 third, multiplied by that vector 1, negative 4 thirds, 1 third. And we can simplify. We know 3 goes into 9 3 times. So our simplified and beautiful final answer is 3 by the square root of 26, multiplied by that vector 1, negative 4 thirds, 1 third. So this is that unit vector pointing in the direction of maximum increase or steepest ascent. Now, part C again is asking us to find the rate of maximum increase. So before we scroll up too far, we know that the rate of maximum increase of our function f 
is defined by the magnitude of our gradient at this given point, 3, 2, negative 1. And we just found this above. The square root of 26 by 9. Woohoo! So there it is. That is our answer to part C. The rate of maximum increase. So last but not least, we need to find the directional derivative of our function f at the given point in the direction of the given unit vector. So part D is asking us to find the directional derivative. So we have capital D sub u, our unit vector, of the function at some ordered triplet a, b, c. And we know that this is defined by the dot product of the gradient at that point with the unit vector. Now we already know that the gradient of our function at the point 3, 2, minus 1 is the vector 1 third, or the scalar multiple 1 third, multiplied by that vector 1 minus 4 thirds, 1 third. And remember way back to the beginning, we were given a vector u, and we were given, we lucked out here, we were given a unit vector. So normally we wouldn't know, we would need to check, but this question specifically states, or we could check for good luck, that this is a unit vector. Phew! So we already know right off the bat the length of this vector is 1. So let's go for it. The directional derivative at the point 3 to negative 1 is the dot product of our gradient vector with this given unit vector. So we can keep our scalar multiple 1 third out in the front for now when we apply the dot product. So we have 1 third multiplied by 1 times 1 third, which is 1 third, plus negative 4 thirds times 2 thirds, or minus 8 ninths. And then last but not least, this is plus 1 third times negative 2 thirds. That's minus 2 ninths. And we need a common denominator with our first term. So this leaves us with 1 third multiplied by 3 minus 8 minus 2, all divided by 9, for a beautiful final answer of negative 7 27ths. So there you have it. This is the directional derivative at this given point in the direction of the given unit vector.